the grade six math practice test for T and ready. Currently on question number 28. What is the value of 1500 divided by the quantity six squared plus four to the third power times 37? Now, the thing about this is we want to make sure that we solve this using order of operations. Why do we want to use order of operations? So we have a consistent plan to get to the answer the same way every time. If we all looked at it and just did it whatever way we felt like, that wouldn't really get us there. Imagine somebody who packs your parachute if you go on a parachuting adventure. Um, you don't want that person just doing it however they feel that day. Well, I think I'll pack this parachute backwards today or I'll make step two, step seven for no reason other than they just feel like it. That is not a life you want to live because it may not be a life that lasts very much longer. You want them to do the th same thing over and over again so they get the same result, which is that the parachute works. Same thing here with math. We want to get to the same answer. So we're going to use the order of operations. I do order of operations as a pyramid with the P on top, E here, That's how I draw it out. The third level down, or I guess it's the second from the bottom, is multiply divide. But the thing about it is when you do PEMDAS and you just remember that part, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or whatever, it doesn't really tell you the whole story. Division is not any worse than multiplication, and multiplication is not any better than division, despite what multiplication will tell you when it's bragging about itself. It doesn't rank any higher. You just do whatever one comes from the left. So if it's division on the left, and then you see a multiply, you do the division first. Similarly, it multiplies on the left, you do that. So the, I draw the arrow to remind myself. Same thing with add, subtract, and subtract, add. Subtraction can come first, it just depends on what comes from the left. So the MDAS part of PEMDAS can be very confusing if you don't understand how it works. So let's look and see what we have. Do we have any parentheses? We absolutely do. And it's like the super parentheses, so it has additional components in it. Thanks, T and ready. Let me just write that out. Fortunately, this is uh, subpart three, so that it is a calculator section. So I'm going to do parentheses, but before I even get there, I have to do the exponents because I can't figure out what this is as an addition unless I get this. So inside the parentheses, the exponent sort of takes over. Sure, none of you will do this. Just remember that when you do an exponent, it doesn't mean six times two. This means six times six. And this one is 4 times 4 times 4, which is to say it's the number, multiply it by itself, and the exponent tells me how many times we're going to do that. So for 6 times 6, it's 36. So I'm just going to write that down below here. And 4 to the third is 4 times 4 times 4. Now over the years, I'm going to fill time talking about this. Over the years, I've seen lots of students make the mistake of sort of just typing things in really quickly and not writing the steps down one at a time. It doesn't take that much extra time. This video will be somewhat longer just because I explain all the steps, but you don't actually, it, it takes a lot of time to write it down in the sense that it takes maybe one minute, which is nothing. Um, but the chance of you getting it correct is better because if you type all this stuff in and just hope for it, it doesn't always work. The calculator is going to do what the calculator does and it tries to follow order of operations, but sometimes it can. So you have to be weary of, or leery of that sort of thing. Um, 36 plus 64. Why am I doing this? It's an add because it's in parentheses. That's the next step. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do that to get 100, but here we are. This is where things start to go wrong for lots of people. They, If you just do PEMDAS and you don't think about it, you see there's a multiply there, so you're going to multiply 37 times 100 and get 3,700. But the problem is the actual step is to find math m multiplication or division left to right. Well, the first division is here. That's the first thing that you do, so I'm actually going to complete this next. And I know I'm dividing by 100, and that should just eliminate the two zeros and end up at 15, but humor me here. And I'm going to bring down this 37. 
And now I'm left with one final step. Bunch of fives. And make sure you put it back up here in the answer provided even if you write on your paper. Just because that's what they're asking you to do. Now, that problem doesn't really take that long to do, but it also has a lot of little traps in it. The first is that you forget that 4 to the third means 4 times 4 times 4, and you just put 12 there. That's not great. Um, the next is most likely that you do the division second, and you try to do the multiply first. So you end up with um, this crazy number. By the way, that should be a very clear <laughs> idea that it's probably not the right answer, but who knows. Um, just remember that multiply and divide, it could be divide, multiply. It's just what comes on the left. Same with add and subtract and subtract and add. It doesn't actually, the order of them doesn't matter. As long as you do the one to the left first, you're in good shape. So that's it for this one. Take your time and write out some of the steps. If you're not running out of time at the end of the assignment, or at the end of the test, it will save you a bunch of heartache. The most annoying thing is to go through all of this and you've worked on it for the whole semester or the whole school year even, and you miss it because of some goofy careless mistake that if you'd taken a few extra minutes, you could have, you know, not had, have not made that mistake in the first place. And as an added bonus, you get to score lower and then you just sit there and stare at the walls until everybody else is finished with their test or the time runs up. So take your time. It's probably worth it to write down a few of these steps at least. And remember your order of operations pyramid. You should be okay.